it's always, you know, always be open, always be ready to learn, absorb. Every day brings a new new opportunities, so welcome it, embrace it. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Welcome to the Dream Big and Think Different podcast, where we inspire, impact, and empower. Progress is impossible if you always do things the way you have always done things. It's time to dream big. Here's your host, Dr. Sachin Maskey. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Dream Big and Think Different podcast, where our mission is to inspire, impact, and empower millions of people. I'm your host, Dr. Sachin Maske, and today I have my favorite uh, people, uh, my uh, brother, my mentor, my friend, who is another dreamer, and I'm very proud, I'm, I'm very honored to have him in my podcast. I just want to start with a a brief bio of my friend, uh, Craig Saha. He's uh, right now in California. Uh, right now, I think he's uh, about three hours behind us. Uh, he's a, have multiple business, uh, but he's a renowned celebrity designer of jewelry and a switch, a watch that he makes. And uh, he also designs highly crafted uh, and bespoke. He's a very good speaker. He has also uh, other business, uh, but he, his main purpose in life is to give back, which we're going to talk about. And he's affiliated with a lot of prestigious organization around the world. He's globally connected. Uh, he has some official time partners like Harvard, Yale, uh, IFA Award, uh, also PGA Tournament. Craig is also the founder of Evoke uh, NFT Marketplace and the Metaverse. And he's also founder of Elibit Mastermind, which I'm actually part of, and uh, which he helps uh, uh, members to go. Uh, he has a blueprint from to go to nine figure business. With that being said, welcome, Craig, to our podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you, brother Sachin. Thank you for having me. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. I went for a walk. It's a lovely day here in Southern California in Orange County. And the sun is out and it's it's lovely out here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I just want to start with the first question I, I ask usually on my on my podcast. Uh, who is Craig Saha and why he is here in this world? Uh, that's my first question for you. Well, uh, I'm still discovering who Craig Shah is. If, you, <laughs> if I find that answer, I'll let you know. But at heart, uh, he's a humble man. He's a very, very from a very humble beginning, someone who uh, wasn't you know, born with a lot of uh, cloud. I mean, obviously I was, uh, you know, taken very well care of by my grandma and my uncle, my mom, but, uh, you know, inherited nothing, uh, came from a very strong background of ethics, moral and integrity and lots of love and uh, learned slowly and gradually how to, you know, navigate in this world. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, as a child, Sachin, I always kept wondering, you know, why I'm in this world, right? What is my purpose? And even now, sometimes I wonder, but God gives you the path, you know, uh, eventually as I was growing older and as I, you know, my grandma instilled a lot of her goodness into me and I, I you know, I always uh, follow her. So she's my guardian angel. You know, I always believe that, you know, if you do good, good will come back to you. Kindness is is the biggest currency in this world, is the strongest currency in the world. And it's also a very strong weapon, you know, I can tell you that. So I believe in this very firmly that doing good to others always will do good back to you. Who is Craig Shaw? I'm a, I'm a designer of uh, watches, jewelry, accessories. That's what I love. That's my passion. I also um, like technology. Um, I like real estate. I like to make a lot of money and I like to help a lot of people. Uh, that's who I am at core. I'm a family man. Um, I've got a beautiful wife and, and two children and a dog. Uh, my mom is with me. So obviously this is my family. I'm a very family oriented person. Obviously, uh, I mean, I'm very much, uh, a, a, you know, involved in so many community act activities and things like that. So that's a little bit about me, you know, but, uh, and your second part of the question was, why am I in this world? Uh, I'm brought in this world to make a difference. I'm brought in this world to help others. Uh, I'm brought in this world to somewhere elevate everyone else around me. And that's my purpose really. And, and, you know, if you look at our mission statement, purpose before profit, 
if you look at what we our principles are helping others you know comes first you know and um, doing your best every single day and you know you know making others enriching others you know that's what i'm here for thank you that's wonderful uh, craig and um, today is a Veterans Day, uh, so we would like to honor everyone, men and women who have served our country, this beautiful country, land of freedom. And I, I think I remember Craig also has a very soft uh, spot for his for this day. And uh, I'm honored again to have you in my podcast. So let's get started with your beautiful journey from your childhood. I just wanted to ask you another question that when you were a kid, like, you know, childhood, um, can you tell me? What was your dream at that time? Do you really want it to be entrepreneur or like how, how does this get started for you? Yes, yeah, Sachin. Uh, first of all, you know, thanks for uh, having me on this wonderful day uh, of, you know, Veterans Day and honoring men and women of this great country. Like you said, it's the greatest country in the world. And I'm going to come back to that in my, you know, further down in this interview. Uh, but, you know, when, as a child, you know, when I was uh, I was two years old and my sister was just born, we were back in India and, uh, you know, our, it's customary over there. I mean, 45 years ago, it was even more, you know, dad would come pick them up when the mother, you know, mother gives birth to the child, you know, she goes to her mom's. But our father never picked us up. He never came back to pick us up. So we never had a dad. So we were taken in by my grandma and my uncle, my mom's brother. And they supported us. They sent us to the best of the best schools. They sent, they did it everything. I don't think my parents would do as much as, you know, uh, you know what, what they did for us. And um, that somewhere filled us with gratitude. We always were, we are very thankful. If you see my sister, she's a absolutely mirror image of me. She's a great human being, very giving, you know, very full of gratitude, very thankful for everything that we got in life. So, as a child, we were this. Were, this were the qualities that were instilled in us, right? Non-violence, not hurting anybody, not you know, give, you know, giving back. My grandma raised a village, not just me. You know, she really supported a lot of other people too. So that kind mm -hmm. of over, you know, shadowed me that this is how life should be. And from childhood, I just saw my uncle, uh, who's the greatest entrepreneur of of all times. You're going to meet him someday. He's back in India. He sure. started with nothing, such and he started with zero. And he built it up. I mean, obviously, he got some from the great grandparents, but you know, he built it up to a, to a place where he built a, a oil refinery, uh, um, one of its kind. It's still standing tall, and fifty oh, years wow. later, in in India, and he's a very successful guy. So I wouldn't be anything else but an entrepreneur. I didn't, I wasn't interested in being anything else. I, although my mom and as some of the other people in the family wanted me to become a an engineer or doctor or something like that, you know typical Indian family or Asian family, they always sure. want you to become a doctor or a lawyer, right? You know, because that's, that's what the security is, where that's where the money is. Yeah. My dad told me, yeah, you have three options, actually. One is doctor, other one is engineer, third one is pilot, you know? So, <laughs> same with me. <laughs> you know, you know, we belong to the same, you know, uh, you know, beliefs, you know, the belief system. So, basically, yeah, you know, I was... Uh, I was given options. So when I was 16, my uncle called me uh, one day to, I was already dating Shelly at that time and he's like, he knew it and kind of liked her, but everything was good. But, you know, he was like, you know, what are you going to do with your life? You know, like, are you, what are, what are the plans? And I'm like, scratching my head. I'm like, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do, go do some business. And he's like, why don't you join our business? You know, he's like, we have a, he had, he had a massive business already set up. And I was the oldest. This was back in India, correct? Back in India when I'm 16. This is where we're talking about 1988, something like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And this is Gujarat, if I'm not wrong. You're originally from, yes. Gujarat is a Western state of India. For those who are listening, that's very entrepreneurial state. You know, you'll find 95% of the people, you know, having their own businesses for people. Long story short, he asked me to come in and into his office and said, what do you want to do? And I'm like, uh, I think I'm going to work for a company where my cousin was working there, mm -hmm. was traveling the world. He was traveling to Hong Kong, Bangkok, and all these you know, exciting places. And I wanted to ultimately come to the U.S. And I, mm -hmm. But there was nobody who would sponsor me for education, so I had to find my way to come here. So I said, I'm gonna, why don't I work for that company? So I dropped out of college. And I went and joined this company selling diamonds. And mm -hmm. um, I, I worked my way through in 10 months. I 
I, you know, I was boss's favorite. Their, their, their children, they like me. I played cricket with them. I took them out for movies. I read their, um, all their, you know, you know, gadgets, you know, I, they couldn't read English that well. So I would do that for them. And I would read the cameras, you know, like back in the days we had Olympus cameras. And I remember all those things, right? I did everything that I needed to do, including, you know, if the, the floor needed to be cleaned, I cleaned that, you know, I, I didn't have any, I just had one motive, you know, I, that I gotta make it to the top. At 17, they promoted me to an assistant manager in Hong Kong. Then we wow. the began. Yeah. That was the big breakthrough. Um, I went to Hong Kong. I on and off for a year. Then I went to Tokyo on and off for a year. And and then I told my boss, I said, if you don't send me to the US, I'm going to go back to my family, uh, my mm -hmm. business. And he's like, no, 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 I want you. I want you. And I was like, okay, so. This was still a jewelry business? Yeah, diamonds and jewelry. Yeah, selling diamonds and jewelry. And jewelry wasn't that prominent at that time. It was more loose diamonds. So I was okay. managing that for them. And, you know, at some point he decided to, uh, he's like, okay, cool. I want you. So he, within a month, he just transferred me from Tokyo office to, I believe it was New York office initially. And then I moved to LA, but then I came to this beautiful country and, you know, my dreamland. I always wanted to be here. I uh, always wanted to study here in the college. That was my biggest dream. I never got that chance, but because I, I was working seven days a week for them nonstop, you know, like anywhere they wanted me to go, whatever they wanted me to do, I would do that. Uh, but I gained a, gained a lot of experience doing that, um, mm -hmm. Sachin. And uh, sure, yeah, that's what my, you know, journey has been as a child to getting into the entrepreneur world, you know, that was my dream. Wow. That's amazing. 16 years old. Uh, I cannot imagine. Uh, I don't know what I was that for me was, you know, straightforward journey, like, you know, my dad wanted me to be either doctor, engineer, or pilot. <laughs> and uh, I went to school in India, actually, and, and go into medical school. But um, yeah, but your interesting journey for you and, uh, and where you are now, we're going to talk about in a few minutes. But let's start with your first, um, I would say, first baby in the business point of view. I call it first baby, which is Craig Silly, that you, you had started almost 20 years ago. And I would like to actually show your, uh, your beautiful piece of work. Uh, you have made this uh, watch. This is Craig Silly watch. Guys, I don't know if people oh, can see it's properly. Tilted. It's tilted. It's tilted. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's tilted a little bit here. Yeah. I'm going to actually take that. Uh, so this is a watch uh, that Craig has. I'm the owner of the watch, the proud owner of the watch. And beautiful Swiss made watch, basically. Uh, I, this is my favorite watch, believe it or not. I will, always wear a special occasion. And um, it comes with lifetime warranty and made in Swiss and uh, the sapphire crystal and beautiful piece. Of uh, can you uh, tell me more about uh, how it, this was born and uh, why Craig Sully? You know, uh, let's hear more about it. I mean, you are the founder and uh, you know creator of this watch. You know, thank you, Sachin. Thanks for the promotion. I, I'm I'm so proud. By the way, that watch is called El Capitan, and it's sold out in the company. I think there's only one left, and that's for me. And it's it's one of the watches that made us who we are today. Um, you know, got us global uh, recognition and all that. Going back to you know how Craig Shelley was born, it's been 27 years now. Um, so, really? Yeah. Wow. It's been it's been 27 years. We founded the company because I was working for this company, right? I was 18, 19, and I still continued working for them until I was 22. And, you know, they promised me pay and salary, which they weren't delivering. And obviously, they were also holding my green card. Like, so, you know, they wanted me to, you know, work for them for as long as I could, for as little as they could, you know, pay me. So, but, you know, nevertheless, I... I decided at one point I had a baby at 23, my firstborn, uh, and we were married and Shelly um, came in and we're like, okay, I need to have a real life and a real salary. I need to get make money because I got to support my family, you know, and my support, my sisters and my cousins and all of that. And I didn't want to take money from the uncle in India, you know, I had too much pride. I'm like, I'm working for six years. I got to be able to support, you know, and I'm a father now, you know, I got to be able to. So, and so I just decided one day and I said, I went to my boss and I told him that I'm no longer going to work for you starting today and I'm going to start my own. I'm not going to step on your toes. I'm not going to do what you are doing. So I started designing. I started designing jewelry under the name Craig S. Like my last name is Shah. So Craig S. So I started designing platinum and 18 karat diamond rings and things like that and started with a very small collection. 
my uncle supported me uh, initially and i'm like okay i will the same uncle in india yes 100% oh, we need to meet the uncle yeah oh my gosh you will love him <laughs> big such a huge big personality beautiful it was his birthday 2 days ago on november 9th is a beautiful beautiful man uh, like i said you know he's raised you know imagine my grandma such a giver so he is the same you know absolutely the same so coming back to i started craig shelley uh, or craig uh, designing as craig s and then a few months later you know shelley or maybe a year later shelley's like you know why don't i join you also and we changed from craig s to craig shelley because it was already out there and this is what this you know guys i want to tell you this you know for the listeners this is the power of this country the beautiful country this is you know they embrace you they everyone welcomed me everyone appreciated me i was a little kid literally from nowhere right i mean i what what why would i be successful why would i why would they need to work with me but they just you know it's all about you know how you present yourself and and people are so open the country is so easy to work with you know you want to start your own business you can do it in seconds you want anything you want you know this country provides you so much liberty and so much opportunity that it's unbelievable and i'm you can start a business here in less than 100 dollars i call you know open the house in less than 100 dollars <laughs> and that 100 dollars can turn into billions if you continue work on it and think about how people are you know they are very open arm you know like i mean i worked in other countries too and i know how difficult it is very tight very tight they don't let you in they don't get you know it's not easy i mean breaking the swiss federation was not easy you know like we had to get into it no i'm you know got to be with them got to have that you know there but this country is the one that you know i i really you know they embraced me the clients embraced me and it just picked up you know craig shelly started becoming a, a thing slowly and you know and, uh, and so mm-hmm. a question about why what i was just curious uh, why you chose what as your business it was very funny so when i was a kid i was gifted a watch and uh, i don't know who gave it to me but someone gifted me a watch and i was so much in love with the watches so every time i made a little money like if i had few hundred dollars i would when i was in hong kong or I was in tokyo i would go to matsuzakaya i remember as a kid i went to 18 17 18 i i spent 250 or 300 dollars which was a lot of money back then and for a young person who doesn't make a lot of money i bought a jaguar watch for myself then i went to switzerland wow. and i bought a longine and i then i and then i as i made money as i started my own business and started making sales i bought roger de bar i bought you know Rolexes I bought several Rolexes and I bought you know um uh, a Corums and very limited edition what attracted me was if it was more limited I was more excited to buy and and I was spending a whole lot of money into you know I was making money but I was also buying a lot of watches because it was it was a lot of excitement for me and I made a collection and everything like that and then one day I thought to myself you know like why don't we I want I just design you know something and and cricket was my favorite sport you know that um mm-hmm. so icc was coming up with a world cup series and i'm like why don't i design something and send it out to them and and see what happens and i designed and i sent it out to icc international cricket council at that time there their office in singapore and they just loved it they loved the product they gave me the official timepiece uh you know category and they're like okay you can be the official timepiece but i had to come up with a lot of money which i didn't have to be able to do the sponsorship and all of that so i but that kicked started the whole journey and from that point on i designed um i started i reached out to a swiss manufacturer and i said you know what can you help me he's like yeah but you got to make a thousand watch if i got or that kind of money and he's like okay you can't make it then a few months later he reached out and said okay how, how about can you make can you handle a hundred I said, yeah, I can do that. He says, I'm running something. I'll make a hundred for you. And at that point, you know, I was like, okay, I'll hustle a little bit and I'll make it work. Watches was my passion. Like it became, I loved watches, right? And that's where I started being creative. And I saw an opportunity actually. Um, I got to tell you that, that, you know, doing what everybody does. Let's say if you are surrounded by a bunch of diamond dealers or jewelers, right? Everybody's doing the same thing, right? but if you become creative and if you become path breaker if you design something different and offer something different you're going to create a market people going to like you and people started buying watches from me from my hands and i was like amazed 
to see that you know they have option to buy Rolexes, they have option to buy so many other brands which are well established, and you know we're a little boutique company, and why would they buy from me? But they love the design, they love the quality, they love the craftsmanship, they love the lifetime warranty. We added so much value to it, Sachin, and that's what I learned that if you add value and give value, people will appreciate it. You stand behind your product, so that's really where you know my watch journey started. You're listening to the Dream Big and Think Different podcast with Dr. Sachin Maskey. Be sure to stop by SachinMaskeyMD.com to download a free copy of Dr. Maskey's book. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a beautiful watch again. You know, I'm wearing this and, uh, you know, we'll swift a little bit of gear now from the watch to another venture, another baby that Craig has. And we, actually, I'm part of the member also. It's called Elevate Mastermind. And uh, we met in uh, first time actually via Zoom and we talk about the program. I immediately like the, the mission behind the program, uh, the mastermind. And, and my question again for you is why Elevate Mastermind and how, how was it born and what is the journey behind that too? Yeah, um, Elevate was, you know, it's very close to my heart, uh, obviously. And it was born in 2014. I think somewhere this guy, Ryan Long, he came... You know, he kept coming to my Beverly Hills store and he's like, Craig, you need to sponsor my events. And I'm like, well, man, I'm not, a, you know, why do I need to do that, any of this? And he's like, you just need to trust me. There's a lot of great entrepreneurs. There's a lot of great thought leaders, coaches, actors, movie stars. And I'm like, you know, another person blowing smoke. You know, like that's what I was thinking in my head because he wanted thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 as sponsorship. I'm like, I'm not paying that kind of money. I'm a jeweler. I'm very happy with what I'm doing, right? But he says, no, it'll open up your eyes, you know. And he's like, okay, don't pay me anything. Just come to my event. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'll do that. So uh, his first event was, I think, at Playboy Mansion and in LA. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I <didn't expect. laughs> but I still went there. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, the packed. The place was, you know, super packed and uh, with a lot of great people and all of a sudden, he goes up on the stage and he says, uh, everybody, my friend here, you know, the Shaw of Beverly Hills is here, Craig Shaw. I'm like, Shaw of Beverly Hills, where did he get from? <laughs> uh, it was so funny. Ryan was a really amazing guy. And he put me up. He's like, come on the stage. I'm like, the lights on my face, you know, like, I just went I blank. I had no idea what to say. So I went up and I said, you know, I took my watch off. I was wearing a very nice, um, you know, Master Blaster a 15k watch um i took it off and i said i'm gonna it's a 15k watch i'll donate this to his charity uh wow or versus 15 minutes later i mean ashton matthew i mean holly berry like there's richard branson like gosh there were like people like i blew my mind like they just came he brought everybody around me and i became mm. the center of our you know, attention and i was like what the heck just happened you know and from there my phone never stopped ringing. Every thought leader, every coach, <laughs> they started calling me, hey, can you do the same thing at my event? And then I made friends with them and they were start started buying jewelry and watches from me and it became a business for me. And I'm like, okay, this sounds good. And then I was in their rooms, you know, they were coaching and teaching and all these things. And I saw one thing and one thing was that they were selling hope and people were buying hope. I mean, the programs were amazing. I learned so much from there, right? You know, I was part of that. You, you said selling hope? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were, in a nutshell, they were, you know, selling a program, but, you know, people were buying a five ten thousand dollars $10,000 program. But what were they selling is, you know, they were saying, oh, this is how you do it. This is how it's done. So it's, it's like selling hope. Like, okay, this if you do this, this is what will happen. And people, I saw that most people were exiting and not doing anything with it. So there was a crack. Sure. You know, somewhere there was, People need hand-holding. You know, that's what I understood. So I changed the model a little bit, you know, for Elevate. I started Elevate. And in Elevate, I started with very humble beginnings again with a few of my elite clients. And, you know, I, I used to throw parties. Every quarter I used to have an event. I used to have a new drop. And these guys would come in and we would make sales. And that turned into a mastermind. I mean, they would network amongst themselves. So we said, okay, why don't we change a little bit we give them the tools that they need to succeed, right? 
you know, mm-hmm. need, you know, systems in play, you know, they need email systems, they need, you know, our designers, they need web developers, they need so many backend systems that are not simply not there. So why don't we give them the value for their money? Plus we created their incentives program. So that kind of what made us different from everybody else out there. Not only they're getting some great people and meeting them and their roller decks is being, you know, increased and their business is elevating, but they're getting a support system. They're getting live events. They're getting watches and jewelry as incentives to give out to their salespeople or their clients. So they were closing more, better and better. So that slowly it grew and in pandemic, it just accelerated. And more people were just sitting home and they started doing online, you know, every two weeks we were doing. First, we were doing every weekly, you know, like during pandemic in 2020. Now we're doing every two weeks. Um, but, you know, it was, it just became a thing and, and people loved it. And we had our first annual golf tournament in 2019. And then we kept growing from that point on, you know. Sure, sure. And I just want to uh, tell everybody listening and watching this. I've been to a lot of mastermind and, uh, you know, I can surely tell from heart and Craig, uh, you know, when I go to his event and I really feel, you know, very honored and what he does different is he tried to help everybody and uh, everybody knows everybody basically. And uh, we have fun also, by the way, we have a lot of fun and a lot of uh, networking. And uh, as we all know, our net uh, worth is network. So, you know, it's definitely like-minded people supporting each other. It's an amazing thing to have. And, that, and for me, especially how I've grown from, you know, since less than 10, 10 months, I would say, is by going through this event and doing a mastermind and, and Craig is uh, one of them. So I'm very, uh, you know, appreciate what you do. Well, Sachin, I appreciate you as well. You know, you're an action taker. What I've seen you from the day I met you is, you know, you're instant, you, you, you take action. People, you know, people just think, you know, people think, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? It's 5,000, it's 15,000, it's 20,000. Yes. If you can afford it, if your business has revenue and you absolutely need to do this, why? Because this will accelerate. It will take your business to three, four, five X, 10 X, you know, um, within a year or two years, you know, if you, it depends on, and again, this is not a funnel. It's a business relationship uh, platform. You know, you build relationships, you build friends right. or life, you know, like, you know, we're, and then how much business have all of us done together? Like, wow, it's amazing. Like, you know, I see that, yep. you know, we've invested in your companies, you've invested in our companies, vice versa. We, so many other people, right, all around us. So it's all about, you know, don't try to make a sale. Try to build a relationship. That Absolutely. will bring you so much value, oh, you know, Absolutely. at the time. Yeah, so. So the another one, uh, another, uh, the, the new baby, I would say, that the latest creation that Craig has started, it's called Evoke NFT. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to say that I am the lucky one to be part of this one, actually. And, uh, you know, uh, it's called Evoke. You're the first investor, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. NFT, what you're doing, why NFTs, and you know, and then we can slowly, you know, wrap up the call and you know, go from there. You know, it's very important to know something. You know, why? You know, you asked me about watches. You asked me about things. I've always stayed ahead of the curve. I mean, our I've tried. To, you know, and and you know, basically finding new technology, whether it's a new cut of diamonds or whether it's a new shape of a watch or whether it's a new uh, engine or or a me- mechanism of a watch. You know, I've always been creator innovator, right? And that really helped me to have a mindset of a creator, uh, or at least find people who are creators. So when technology came around, and and you know, if you if you look at you know the biggest problem solvers are the biggest, you know, money, you know, makers, right? Right. If you find prop people who are solving problems, so it's about two things, finding the problem and solving it. The problem. And people behind the, you know, company, right? Those two things, you, know, you look for those two things. And if you find them, put some money in it, put, invest some money, in it, become an investor and then let it grow. So when NFTs came around coming to Evo, when you know, I always wanted to do something with crypto and it was so exciting. My kids were early believer in it. I was still, you know, I didn't, I was so naive. I'm like, I don't know, you know, we're very traditional, you know, but as NFTs came around, I really saw the opportunity. I figured out quickly in 2019, 2020 that, you know, this is, this thing is really going to stay here for a very long time. It's a global receipts, basically. NFTs are smart contracts and global receipts. So I, mm-hmm. 
I designed something. I said, why can't, you know, why can't they become certificate of authenticity, right? So I figured that part out and I'm like, okay, for all my watches, jewelry, shoes, accessories, luggage, whatever, you know, everything comes with a certificate of authenticity, right? And and for the most NFTs you see, they are digital artwork. It's nothing more than a JPEG or a GIF or a video or MP3 or MP4. But what we designed is we designed a system put an NFC chip inside the physical product that connects directly with your phone. When you tap your phone to it, it connects to straight, it goes straight to your NFT, which is... Yeah, I'm dying to see my NFT watch, man. I already got your watch, by the way. It came from Switzerland. Anyway, so coming back to this NFT project, you know, so it's basically a digital global receipt. Like it's on blockchain, it's permanent. It tells you who the creator is, what the number of the watch is, or jewelry, accessories, whatever. It could be a diamond, could be your real estate, could be your program, you know, what you're selling. Everything, you know, uh, is it can be uh, digitalized, right, and authenticated. So I found a real utility for it. And so we launched, uh, we're actually in the build mode right now. Evoke is launching the first digital, we call it, physical digital uh, NFT mm -hmm. in place. Um, which means you can sell your physical product associated with the NFT and NFT acts as a certificate of authenticity. So now it has a real value. But we also gave them additional utilities like if you hold the NFT, you can also attend one of our events or our masterminds or VIP events like you know, PGA tournaments or Tao nights or whatever. You know, things that are very crucial for your business to network and meet some great people. So that's in a nutshell, sure. We can know. So uh, this NFT, which I'm very excited about, and I just want to hear from you, what is your your vision? Where you want to take this to? This company is going to go places. It's going to be very big. Uh, we're going to strategically uh, design uh, a unicorn out of this. Hopefully, we can all make you proud. The technology is really cool, very super solid. Uh, that's number one. But it's also backed by products, real products, right? So it's not just digital artwork or anything like that. It's got real product, tangible product. You know, it's got value. Yeah. Uh, plus, it's it has several different components. So it works like an umbrella company where it will have several different verticals, right? It's going to have the events part of it. It's going to have the physical products part of it. So there will be sales coming from every, from metaverse. So we're doing the transactional metaverse. So eventually, this will turn into a metaverse, which is like a very super advanced mall. I mean, most people should know by now what a metaverse is. If they don't know, they can Google it. Metaverse is where, you know, it's an experiential, it's nothing more than your website, you know, turn into an experience. Like, so when people come in, the avatars can walk in and experience, try the products before they purchase it. So we're building a transactional metaverse in Evoke. So Evoke is an immersive technology company at its root, right? It's going to build new technologies constantly, continuously, and bring new people and bring new companies. It's a very collaborative space, so. Uh, for those who don't know this, uh, you know, space, yeah, I welcome you to get educated. We have educators on our board. We have, there's so much education out there. Look for it. There are really great people out there putting content out. So definitely go out and look for it. But Evoke is um, is my yeah. baby that we're going to, <laughs> hopefully going to put a big smile ear to ear for everybody. Sure, definitely. I'm, I'm excited and I'm being part of this for sure. And lastly, we're going to talk about, I uh, forgot to, you know, talk about, but we're going to talk about giving back, which is actually one of the reasons we got connected. And, and I'm, I'm honored and, 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 and proud to say that Craig uh, joined uh, the nonprofit that I founded back in 2018, Donegal Foundation. He's a board member. And uh, we're going to, again, uh, we're trying to do a few things this year, next year. Uh, I wanted to, Craig, uh, so I guess uh, for me is happiness, the secret of happiness is to is to serve others and by giving back without any expectation so and same with craig and and that's the reason we are joining hand together and hopefully make a impact in and make a difference in billions of life and i just want to hear from you a little bit about you know what your thought process on this and what do you see we're going through you know all this yeah um, our journey together definitely brother you know this is one thing that i always learn you know giving back is a selfish act no really if you think of it it what does it do it actually heals you. It does good for you. 
It's, exactly. You're not doing anything for others. You're doing it for yourself. So when you give back, what happens? It really gives you a satisfaction deep down, right? You feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I did something really good. Thank God, right? It's a giving back is a selfish act for yourself, which is, which means that you should do it more because it's you're doing it for yourself. And the more you give, the more it comes back to you. Mind you this. Coming to Dhani Yoga, and I mean, there's a lot I can talk about. I mean, giving back, you know, I can talk for the entire day if you want me to. But, you know, just giving time in mind, Dhani Yoga Foundation, such a beautiful cause. And I fell in love with it when such interested to me. And I was personally going through some health issues myself. And it came, came in at a time like, we have to, we have to do something because I was experiencing it. So we put out an intention. He put out an intention to build the world's largest diabetic center. So diabetes, as you guys know, is a root cause of so many chronic disease. And I don't need to educate people on that. I mean, it's just a terrible, terrible thing that our, it eats our body from inside, right? So, and there are so many helpless people and millions and millions and maybe even close to a billion people are affected by this. So what we designed is, you know, we can all do this. It's very simple. It's been done. And if we can put our efforts towards it, uh, we can build a very large, you know, center and then replicate that throughout the world. So the Yoga Foundation, uh, we're building the first one in the name of his brother, Prabhin, and we're going to build it starting in India. We have a model that's been replicated. And we can take that and adopt that and, you know, eventually come to the United States, you know, um, and build some centers over here and everywhere in the world. Wherever there is a need for it, we will go there. And and I believe it's a very great cause that you have such in. And I commend you and your wife to start this foundation. And I'm honored to be a part of this as a board member. And I hope I can add a lot of value and I hope I can bring a lot of good you know, goodness to this. Yeah. So that's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, words and uh, beautiful, uh, kind, kindness behind everything you do, you know. And uh, I guess it was wonderful seeing you again. You know, I, we, you, you and I actually talk every day and if people don't know, like we are very close. He's my brother, mentor, friend, and, and above all, I think Craig has a beautiful a heart to give back. And that's a spirit that makes him uh, wake up every single day. And uh, I'm looking forward for a long-term relationship and definitely make a dent in this universe before our lifetime. Thank you, Craig. Thank you everyone to, for listening. Uh, before I leave, uh, where, where people can find you and, and, and you know, I guess uh, one thing you wanna share with uh, people uh, that they can get advice from you. Well, where they can find me is social media, I guess, you know, today it's very <laughs> easy to find anyone. Uh, Facebook and Instagram. I mean, I live on Facebook, but most now I'm learning to go on Instagram more often. You know, Craig Shaw, both places, Craig Shaw, see you on Instagram. But um, other than that, what advice can I give? I mean, I'm learning every day. I think, you know, people think that I'm teaching them or mentoring them or but I learn from them. From I learn from you, Sachin. You know, you have so many things that we do together, which I learn. So it's always, you know, always be open, always be ready to learn, absorb, Every day brings a new new opportunities, so welcome it, embrace it. Um, it's very hard, but sometimes we are toughest on our own selves, right? We're very difficult with our own selves. We put ourselves at the highest standards, put the bar so high. I gotta do this. Gotta do this. I didn't do that. I didn't give it a break. Give it a break. You know, enjoy the life, enjoy the moment, and 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 do um, do your best. You know, uh, put a smile on somebody's face. You know, that's uplift someone, you know, that's a great way to do it. But above all, you know, I think it's very important to know that, you know, money plays a very big role. So don't, I'm not oblivious to that. You know, this is very important to make money. Why? Because if you're full, you can overflow and give to others. So first fill up your glass, you know, fill up your cup, whatever it is. Find opportunities. There are so many amazing people and so many interesting ideas and solve problem solvers. So if you can do anything be the entrepreneur, expand this economy because you and I, we're doing this, you know. People like, people who are watching, we're, we're playing this role. It's not the big corporation. They get away with zero taxes. You, we all know that. But we're the ones thriving, exchanging money, transferring money and doing things and, 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 and 
and making things happen. So find a problem, find a problem solver, or be the one that solves a problem and go crush it. You know, don't don't let your dreams go. Don't let somebody else play your dream. You know, like so be that one. So that's it. Thank you, thank you, Craig. Again, thank you everyone for listening and watching. And please don't forget to rate and review. Or if you're watching YouTube, just subscribe our channel to learn more about the next episode. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Dream Big and Think Different. We hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to our show so you don't miss any gold nuggets. We would appreciate it if you could rate and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, and other platforms. And be sure to stop by SachinMaskeyMD.com to download a free copy of Sachin's book. Until next time.